put up Facebook. You get to see it together. Boom. Boom. What's up, good peoples? What's up? What's up? What's up? This is your boy, Dion Sylvester, and I just want to welcome you guys to today's live, going live today. This is your boy, Dion Sylvester. And let me pull my thing up here. Hmm. All right, all right, all right. Let me move myself up so y'all can see everything that's going on up here. I might have to make this just a tad smaller. All right, today, guys, we're going to talk about not focusing on what it costs to get started but on what you can have long term. That's what we're focusing on today. Give me one second, guys, as I do something really quick. I'll be right with you guys. When you when you're live, you can you can do stuff like that because you live. <laughs> so back to the topic at hand. Don't focus on what it costs to get started. Focus on what you're going to get or what you're going to have long term. Let's talk about that for a moment, guys. When you look at at my page. Everybody's familiar with that logo, Starbucks. Even if you don't drink Starbucks, you know exactly what it is, what it's all about. So this is the menu that you'll see at any uh, Starbucks restaurant that you go into. A lot of people don't drink Starbucks, but as we know, a lot of people do. When a person goes into a Walmart, do they uh, worry about what it's going to cost or do they just buy it because they want the taste of the coffee? They're following the crowd. All right, brother Lamar, thank you for joining in, brother. Do you do you go into the coffee house and say, um, how much is the Trente Caramel Macchiato? Or do you just go in there and say, give me a vinte caramel macchiato, regardless of the cost. You know, you, you don't, you don't, we, we put, we put value on what costs and how much we're going to buy things on so much of the wrong things. Like you could, you could care less how much a large caramel macchiato costs. You just go in and you pull out your card and you just pay for it just without even thinking about it. Cause it's what you want. Now, let's talk about what you want. I mean, as an individual, because we all are part of nature. And if you are a part of nature, it's natural for things in nature to grow. You know, uh, when you plant a seed, you put it in dirt, you water it. Once it, it breaks out of the dirt, it grows into a beautiful flower, beautiful plant, vegetable, fruit, whatever it is, it's going to grow. It gets bigger. Now, you are a part of nature as a human being yourself. So it's natural that you want to grow. You want to develop. You want more. You want to do better. You want to be better because you have the chemical balance in your mind and in your brain and in your heart, spirit, and mind to do, want, and have more. The only way to do, want, and have more is to have more money to take care of whatever it is that you want. All right. Let's, let's just get that clearly out of the way. But we always put value on a lot of the things that we want the wrong way. Do you want more money? Do you want a bigger house? Do you want a nicer lifestyle? Do you want your kids to go to a better school? You know, when it comes to all these things and the answer is yes, the bottom line is it takes money to get there. So when we're talking to you about an opportunity to learn how money works, 
because everything in life that is materialistic has a price tag to it. Even to feel better, to go to the gym, you have to pay for a membership fee. And even if you don't have, if you don't pay to go to a membership fee outside, say if you're fortunate enough to have a workout place where you live, trust in, and you better believe part of your rent that you're paying or part of, you know, what you're paying for your rent is going toward that health thing. So you're, you're paying for better health. You know, you want to eat better, you stop going to Walmart and then you go to Whole Foods. We all know they call it whole paycheck because the food costs so much more when you want to eat healthier, you know, as opposed to just going to get Folgers, you know, good to the last drop Maxwell house, as opposed to do that, people go to places like Starbucks to pay for what a better brand of coffee. So we want better. We want to do better. Do we want our bank accounts to be better? Do you want a healthier bank account? You know, that's a, that's a logical question. You know, would you like to have more money in your account? Period. You know, just not asking how you got it. Would you like a better bank account? The answer logically is yes, of course. Of course I would. Of course I would. But I don't know how to do it. Okay, so let me show you exactly how you can have a larger bank account. Man, what is it going to take? You know, as soon as you 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 offer that solution to a person, because they can, you can say you want to work out, man. Let's go to the gym. We can go get a membership at Planet Fitness. It's ten dollars a month. Oh man, okay, that's ten bucks. Let's go and do that. Oh, I mean, you want to eat healthier, man? Instead of going to Walmart, we can go to Whole Foods and we can get the whole wheat and the whole. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Oh man, you want to get a a bigger bank account, man? What it's going to take? Instantly, the mind shuts down when we talk about money. There's a lot of tables, dinner tables across America that money is a taboo. You can't even talk about financial literacy at the table with your children. And do you know why? I'll tell you why families don't talk about money at their dinner table. Because they don't understand the language of money. And if you don't understand the language of something, then you don't discuss it because you're not an expert in it. You can always tell your children, make sure you go and you get good grades. You better get an A in algebra. You gotta get an A in English. You better get an A in gym. You better not fail none of those classes. And we can say that with conviction to our children because we've been through that. We went to school ourselves, so we know what's expected from school. So when we say, okay, well, let's talk about making your bank account bigger. Let's talk about multiplying the money that's in your account already. That falls on deaf ears because there's no knowledge there and there's no, there's, there's no level of competence when it comes to talking of that because nobody's had that, that education to have that valid conversation until now. Now we can talk to you about that and enhance your level of education and talk to you from like I'm 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 from the south side of Chicago. I I'm I'm straight hood. I I grew up as a gang member. I grew up on the streets. I got felonies on my background. I got a bullet hole in my wrist, went in my wrist, came out my elbow ricocheted all up through there. So I didn't been I didn't I didn't I didn't been through that and a lot of people have as well. So I can relate to you on that level and also take that level to you when we're talking about financial literacy. So now we can meet right here on an even road. When I say I can talk to you about how to multiply the money that's going into your account, how you multiply it. I can talk to you about that. Yeah, I, I didn't did my street pharmaceuticals. I did that. But did I actually multiply the money? Did I make, did I give the money a job? Did I make the money grow into my account? No, the product that I had made more money and then I went and bought more product to make more money. That's two totally different situations, two totally different conversations. What I'm talking about to you guys is literally making your money that you have fill out an application. Your money fills out an application for you. You remember when you filled out an application for a job and you got dressed when you, when you got dressed, you put on your, your best dress suit and tie, fellas. Well, ladies, you got dressed in, in your, beautiful, uh, your, your beautiful interview outfit. Hey, Bridget, how you doing, Chairman? 
So when you went and sat in front of that person and you had that interview, you sold yourself the best way that you could so that you can get that job. Now, what I'm talking to you about is making your money dress up. You work hard for your money. That's a given. Everybody works day, eight to 10 hours a day. Everybody works hard. Everybody makes X, Y, Z amount every other Friday. You get paid that. I got that. I understand that. That pays your bills. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about once you get it. Once you have it in your possession, you are to take a portion of that money and you make it fill out an application to go to work for you. That makes sense. Give your money a job. Use the same example when you're teaching your children. La John, La Lisa, I'm about to show you how to multiply your money. This is what you have to do. Step one, if I give you an allowance, you don't just go and spend all of your allowance. Because mommy and daddy has just learned not to spend every dollar that we get when we get paid now. That's what mommy and daddy used to do. We used to say we live in paycheck to paycheck. We robbing Peter to pay Paul. We don't know how we're going to make these ends meet. No, I can't afford you to buy you these gym shoes this weekend. You're going to have to wait until mommy can put some money together or daddy can put some chips together and then we'll go and we'll get them later. That conversation is about to be eliminated because now you are going to learn how to take a portion of your money, make it fill out an application and give you a job. We're not going to worry about how much the education is going to cost. Stop worrying about how much it is it's going to cost and you focus on what are you going to have once you make that investment in yourself and giving your money a job? Once you make that money, fill out the application. Guys, if, if, if I'm, I'm, I'm just touching the surface now. I haven't, I haven't got started on these questions that you ask when you're in the interview process because, you know, when you got your job, they had questions that they had to ask you and you had to answer them questions. So now you got questions you got to ask your money to see if it's righteous enough to work for you and go to work and start multiplying. You got to ask the question now. You are the hiring manager. You are in position. Granted, you worked hard to get your check. You got it in your hand now. Don't let it fly away. Don't just let your money in, and then you got to continue to go to work and trade time and get more money so you can spend it and then repeat this vicious cycle that our grandparents did, that our parents did, and now we're doing now, that we're going to teach our children subconsciously without even thinking about it because it's been conditioned into us. Nobody ever said when we sit down at the dinner table, Multiply your money. All right, so now let me get back to the point. All right. Guys, you see this in front of you. You see this Starbucks coffee. People go to Starbucks. The line, I don't care what Starbucks you go to in the country. When you drive past Starbucks, the drive through is full. People, and they in line is full. People are going in here to spend this money, these dollars. I don't even want you to focus on the dollars. You see this over here? This, this. This extra, this extra shot. This, this we're gonna talk about this extra shot. This eighty-five cent. That's what I want you to focus on. That's all you need to give a job out of your paycheck. When you get your paycheck, we gonna get this eighty-five cents a job. Can everybody here agree with me? That's listening to me under the sound of my voice. Can you take eighty-five cents? and have it fill out an application for a job for you. Just just, just put yes in the comments. If, if you can give 85 cent out of your hard earned money a job, if you can give the uh, extra espresso shot out of your Starbucks that you buy every day, I'm not even saying every day, I'm just saying take 85 cent for the week and you give 85 cent a job and you make it go to work for you. Can you, can you do that? All right. So stay with me here. Work, work, work with me here. Listen to me as, as, as I break this down for you. What I learned and what I'm sharing with you, I had to pay for it. Before I knew this information, I went to Grambling State University. I graduated from Grambling State University with two bachelor degrees and one associate degree. So I have three college degrees from Grambling State University. And I paid on average four to $500 per hour. 
because you know when you go to college, you pay by credit hour. You have to buy by credit hours. So when you break that down and you think about it, you pay the av the average credit hour in the United States is six hundred dollars an hour. So you're paying six hundred dollars an hour for a degree for four years, only to graduate to apply for a job that's going to pay you twelve dollars an hour. I think that went over your head. So I'll repeat that because because my, my numbers on my live seem to be going down. I'm not making much sense. Apparently, nobody's hitting the share button and this 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 not making this not making much sense. I went to Grambling State University. I paid four hundred dollars per hour because you have to buy credits to graduate. You pay by you, you grad you have to have a certain number of credits to graduate. It's credit hours. When you break it down, I pay four hundred dollars per hour for credits to graduate. Once I graduated with a degree, I applied for a job that paid me twelve dollars an hour. Is that a scam? If that's not the biggest scam on the planet, I know I won't send my child to school to pay five hundred dollars for a credit hour only to graduate and be offered a job at twelve to fifteen dollars per hour. It doesn't make sense. So because that was the education that I received, it's hard for me to talk to my child about how making money work when all I know is how to make is to work for the money. So because 95 percent of the people in the world only understand how to make money work, I mean, how to work for money and only one percent of the world knows how to continuously make money work for them. I didn't have that education. So I had to find that education. I had to pay for that knowledge. Once I tell you what I pay for it, you might think I'm telling a, 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 a lie because I just explained to you that a college credit is $500 an hour. On average, $600 an hour for one hour, one credit hour in college is $600 per hour. Once you finish college, they give you 12 to $15 per hour on a job to pay that back. Once I found this financial literacy and it was presented to me, and the gentleman told me I had access to this knowledge for $195. I couldn't believe it. Why couldn't I believe that you're going to teach me how to multiply my money for only $195 when I pay a college $50,000 over four years to learn how to make $12 an hour? to pay that back. But you're going to actually show me something that I can sit at a dinner table with and it not be taboo. I can teach my child how to multiply their money with when I give them their allowance to make it grow and all I have to pay you is $195? And then when I share this with other people that you can also learn how to multiply your money, how to give your money a job and make your money work hard for you just like you worked hard for it, and you can get the same information for $195. And when I tell a person that, they say that that's too much. How much is this coffee, this car caramel macchiato? That's $5. You go to Starbucks five times a day. I mean, five times a week. Five, 10, 15, 20, $25 in a week. So how long will that take you to spend $200 on coffee? A month? You spend $200 on coffee a month, on a cup of coffee. And some people go back and get seconds and thirds. I'm not talking about the cup of coffee, guys. I'm talking about the extra espresso shot. <laughs> guys, do, do yourselves a favor. Let's not focus on how much it costs. How many of you guys watching right now expect to be alive in the next five to 10 years? If, if you're on the line, if you expect, I mean, 
of course, we can't control the future, but if you expect to live, if you are in charge of this around you, and you said, I plan to be here for the next five to 10 years, Put a one in the box down there. Say yes. However you do, hit the like, share button, whatever you do, if you expect to be around here. Okay. Check this out. So if we took this 85 cents, right, this extra shot, we took this extra shot. And, and mind you, we said this was $200, right, for the month. So this might be, what, maybe 50 bucks? So let, let, let's, let's look at what $50, if you learn the skill, if you made an initial investment in your financial education, not what they taught us in college about paying $50,000 for college to go get a $20 per hour job, but learning to take $0.85 cent of your hard-earned money give it an application and make it work for you have anybody has anybody ever heard that before now give you have your money fill out an application for you let's learn how to make our money work for us we're the boss we don't have to always work for money we do need a job to pay our bills granted that because that's the way we've been taught forever but now there's a new education, guys. Before, I'll be honest with you, before five, six years ago, this education was not privy to you and I. You had to have a net worth of over a million dollars to be able to have access to this information. But thanks to technology and thanks to the heart of a gentleman who was in this industry, he gave this knowledge, this wisdom, and this understanding to us at a fraction of a cost so that the average person that has been working hard for their money for years and years and years can now learn with a small investment how to make their money work for them i want to come to you at a common sense point of view i'm not coming to you from from the business opportunity or anything i'm coming to you from an educational point of view i have college degrees so i have what I have the validity to come to you as an educator because I taught in the Chicago public school systems. But now you want to learn how to give your money a job. You're going to learn how to make your money, fill out an application and make it go to work for you. Once you decide, okay, it's not about how much it costs to get this education. How much can I have at the end of the education? How many of you are ready to, See, just a short chart, because I asked you guys how many of you were ready to be alive, was, 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 if it was up to you, would still be alive in five to 10 years. And you guys said, yes, you, you, you definitely, that would be you. Okay, so I'm not going to show you five, 10 years from now. How about if I showed you the next 60 to 90 days? Because you already said you're going to be here five to 10 years from now, what if I showed you what the power of this 85 cent that you put together, if you put this to the side for a month and may, and put $50 to the side, what that $50 could do for you in the next 60 days. Are you, are you, are you ready to, love to find out with financial education, when you have this information that you've only invested $195 plus tax, when you invested that in your education, this is the type of discussions that you can now have at your dinner table. How many of you guys are ready to learn the discussion that you are going to have at your dinner table once you decide to make this investment of only $195? If you're ready, put a number one down in the bottom or type that you're ready. Let me know that you're still here with me and you're ready to understand how financial literacy works, how you communicate this with the people that you love. Okay, I don't have any ones. I don't see any comments. So I would say that you guys don't, Everybody is, is okay with financial literacy still being taboo at their dinner table. Nobody wants to know the discussion that you should have with your children. That's, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? So I can end the conversation. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you, Lisa. Somebody is with me. Okay. Thank you, Lamar. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Because you guys said you, you told me and you told yourself you'll be here for the next five to 10 years. 
How many of you have children depending on you or a spouse or a loved one depending on you for the next five to 10 years? If that's you, I'm talking to you. This is the conversation that you're going to have. Now, say that you decide to give your child uh, $50 for their allowance. Now, some of this talk that I'm going to share with you, you might not be aware of because financial literacy has its own different language, okay? And, and once you start to learn the language of financial literacy, then you can position yourself around a whole different circle of people. You know, as, as my dad always said, if you hang with nine broke friends, you're bound to be the 10th one. But that also works in the positive because that's a negative annotation. But you can also say if you hang with nine wealthy people, you're bound to be the 10th one. So you surround yourself, as you begin to get this language, you surround yourself with people who talk this language, and then you teach this language to your children, okay? So you've given, you remember that 85 cent that we talked about? We, we've accumulated that. We put, instead of going to Starbucks all month, we're going to put $50 to the side because we were spending $200 a month at Starbucks plus the extra shot. Now we're not going to worry about the cup of coffee. We're just going to worry about the extra shot. The extra shot times the whole month, that's $50. So let's say we start in a brokerage account. I don't know if, if you guys have ever heard of a brokerage account. As we came up through the educational ranks, through our mom and dad, they say once you get a job, you get your check, you, you get your check, and you open a checking and savings account. Can anybody agree? That's, that's what we were taught. You open a checking or a savings account or the credit union. Those were the three places that we save money and we get our debit cards and that's how we paid our bills. So what we have here is a brokerage account. Once you get started in the financial literacy platform where you make that small investment, they teach you and you have a community of us together working with you where we talk about our brokerage accounts. Okay, and in talking, to our, in, in talking about our brokerage accounts, you can set up a brokerage account for your child as well. Once you do that, we're going to start with a $50 balance. That's what we're putting in, into this account right here, $50. As you can see, we started it with 50. On day number one, we give our, we give our money a job. We don't use the entire $50, guys. We're starting the account with $50, but we're taking this on a step-by-step -step journey. OK, you do this for yourself. You do one for your children. You do one for your spouse. Everybody in the house can have one. OK, we're only going to invest 10 cents out of our $50. 10 cents, guys. 10 cents. Our lot size is 0 0.001. And she's only five and a half. Goodness gracious. So. <laughs> I remember I had said, I'm talking five, to, I, everybody gave me five to 10 years. I'm just asking you to give me 60 days. I'm going to say 90 days because we're going to include weekends because we don't really do, some of us don't do things on Saturday and on, on Saturday and Sunday because the market closed on Saturday and Sunday. So let's just say we got two, three different accounts. And on day one on our $50 balance, we invest 10 cents. Now it says that we need 60 pips. What is a PIP? A PIP is another form of calculated or compounded money. A PIP calculates money. So if it says that you need 60 PIPs at, at 10 cent a piece, then you need $6 for today. So we're going to learn on day one how to turn 10 cents into $6. At the end of the day, we have a $56 balance. Guys, we started with 50. Remember, we gave our money an application. Our application, we paid $195 fee out of our own pocket that we worked hard for. We paid the $195 application fee for our money to start working for us. We, we agreed with $50. We gave that $50 a job, and we said, now you go work for me. I'm going to continue to go work my regular nine-to-five job. I'm going to continue to do that. I got this. I, I got, I'm going to work on full-time to take care of my lifestyle. $50, you work part-time to take care of my fortune. I'll repeat that. You continue working on your job. You work full-time to take care of your lifestyle. 
because you have a lifestyle that you have, you've adopted, you've connected to, you formulated with it, this is what you are used to doing on a regular basis with your money. That's your lifestyle. You stick to that. But you took $195 of your lifestyle money, you made an investment in financial education, in your own financial education. You started, and out of that, you you got an application for 195, and then you took fifty dollars of your lifestyle money, and you said, "Now you go to work for me, and you work part time on my fortune." I'm a monitor you because you you the manager, you the supervisor. They work. You still got to monitor them and make sure they they do the, they doing their job. So day one, you took ten cent out of the fifty dollars. It brought you back six dollars. You got fifty six dollars. Guys, as you look at this chart, I'm not going to go day by day by day by day because that'll, you know, take a little bit of time. So let's go to day 15. On day 15, you see on day 14, you've accumulated $243.20 that came from your $50 that you gave a job. You gave your $50 a job. Its job is to go out and make money. On day 14, you have $243 following the system that you have put in front of you based on the financial literacy that you've learned. Okay, so on day 15, our lot size is now 60 cents. So we're taking 60 cents out of our $240. We're investing it and we're looking for 48 pips. That 48 pips at the end of the move of the trade, it brings us $28.80. At the end of day 15, we're at 272. We continue to do this systematically. We do this Monday through Friday. We take the weekends off, just like you do at your job. Take your weekends off. You let your job, your money work like you were. At the end of day 30, guys, the first month, you now you are, you're investing 67 cents. I'm sorry, 67, your lot size is 0.67, which is $6.70. And you might say, oh, $6.70. Remember, you started with 50, and your first investment was 10 cents. Now you're at day 29, you have over $1,300. So now you are in a position where you can invest $6.70 out of your 1300 and you only need 24 pips. So we're gonna show you and through your financial education, you've learned how to look at the market, where to get in, where to get out, how to take risk management, where to take your profit, where to do your stop loss. You've learned in these, these terminologies and you're talking to your children about it at the same way because you're asking them, how is your lot, what was your lot size for the day, Tina? What was your lot size for the day, James? Little Lamar, how, what was your lot size for the day and how many pips were you supposed to get? These are the conversations that we're going to start to have at our dinner table, guys. We are breaking generational curses. And it took us a $195 investment out of our lifestyle to fund our fortune that we're building part-time. Guys, that's day one through 30. Now, you want to see the power of compound interest? You want to see the power of compound interest? Yay, nay. Nobody hitting the share button. Nobody hitting the like button. I, I see a couple of likes. Anybody sharing this? Because people, guys, we got to break generational curses. We have to break these curses off for our families. We have to break these curses. There's no reason why we should not be talking about how to build generational wealth so we don't have to go to work every day so we can work on our fortune. Can you imagine? Let me show you what happens when your fortune starts to surpass your, your, your lifestyle. Let me show you. All right, now we're at day 31. It says day one, but this is actually day 31. Okay, we brought our $1,508 balance. Remember, guys, when you started on day one, how much of your own hard-earned money did fill out the application? Put down in the box, what did you start with? When you started this financial journey, how much did it cost you to get started for the financial literacy? And then how much money did you give a job? Let me see somebody type the answer. Let me see if somebody follow me. That's a two part question. How much did it cost to start to get the financial literacy? And number two, how much of your money did you give a job? I already shared. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Look. To start your financial literacy education was $195 plus tax. Once you gave your money the application and it filled out the application and you said, okay, you're hired, you, you put to work $50. You put $50 in a brokerage account. After 30 days, that account grew to 15, over $1,500. Who was, who was okay 
with turning $50 into $1,500 in 30 days. Everybody okay with that? Okay, everybody's cool with that. All right, great. Now, at day 31, our lot size is now 10% of our amount. So as you can see here on day 31, our lot size combined is $1.50. And it says combined because you don't have to do it all on one trade. You can combine two or three different trades as long as your lot size total is $1.50. So if you had three trades at 0 .50, 0 .50, 0 .50, then that's your dollar, that's your 1.5. That's $15 for the day. And all you need is 13 pips, ladies and gentlemen. You see how your number went from 48 when you first started down to 13? So now your risk management is a lot smaller, even though your, your, your lot size is bigger, but what you need for the day is much smaller. So your money is now working smarter, not harder. You've given your money the job, your, job, your money understands, your, trust me, your money understands how to make more money once you put it in the cycle where it can, where it can repeat itself. But if you never knew that, then you can't do that. We'll continue the vicious cycle of working for money, getting paid, spending it. Working for more money, getting paid, spending it. Working for more money. But now, since we got the financial literacy piece in place and we took a piece of money that, like I said, don't even worry about the, the investment that it costs you. Worry about what you're going to get. Now, let's go down to day 45. On day 45, your lot size is 7.65. You're investing $76.50 for the day. You're like, man, that's a lot of money for the day. Well, is it? You have $7,670 in your account. That's only 10% of your account. And guys, I'll tell you this. I'll be afraid. Are you going to win every day? No, you're not going to win. What? If, okay, ooh, worst case scenario. What if I lose this $994 for today? And instead of it being $8,000, it goes down to $6,700. I tell you what you do. You go back to day 6700, you go to the next day, your lot size is 677, that's your daily value. You go get your 13 pips and you go get your $880 back the next day. How about that? When the Golden State Warriors lose, do they cry and tuck themselves and say, "Well, I'm just going to take my 6700 and I'm just going to get out period. I'm not playing in the league anymore." No, they keep playing. They don't win every game, even though they're the champions. The Bulls won six championships in a row. Well, they skipped two years because Houston Rockets won those two. But between the Bulls, the Houston Rockets, then the Chicago Bulls, did, did those teams win every game they played? No, they didn't. They had losses. But overall, they had more victories than they did L's, and you will too. So now let's go down to day 30. You're at day 60 of giving your $50 a job. You started with $50. You did this for 60 days. Granted, you guys told me you plan on being here five to 10 years down the road, and I'm only talking about two months. Granted, I'll say three months because we're not including Saturday and Sunday. So let's say taking the two days off for two months, say it took us three months to get here. But still in our trading process, it was 60, it was 60 days. At the end of 60 days, the last day, we have a $44.98 lot size, and we're investing $449, and we only need 12 pips. Guys, I'll tell you from our experience, from what we've been learning, we've been learning from a strategy that we just got called the Sharif strategy, which if you're not in this language with us, you would have no idea what I'm talking about. But we get 10 pips in less than 40 minutes. So imagine you got your 10 pips in less than an hour. On day 30, you're over $50,000. Guys, look at these amounts. In one day, you're earning $1,800. The next day, you earn $2,000. The next day, you earn $23. The next day, you earn $3,000. Then you earn $4,000 in one business day. And granted, you are still working full time on your lifestyle. You didn't quit your job. Who's gonna quit their job after 60, 90 days? Nobody's gonna do that. Nobody, you, no, nobody. You still working your job and you still using your lifestyle to pay your car note, to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, to pay your cable bill, to pay your cell phone bill. You're still using your job to do what you were doing anyway. 
you are just building your fortune part time based on the hundred and ninety five dollar financial literacy education that you gave yourself. Because you stop worrying about what it's going to cost now. You just saw what you're going to have in three months. Granted, you follow this strategy because I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be really, really brutally honest with you. Me. Look, I'm going to I had no idea on how to give my money a job. I didn't. I'm being honest with you because that's what transparency is. What's up? Me, myself, started with less than a $50 account. I started with a $10 account. Within a few days, I took my account over to over $200 in just a few days. So because I did that, <laughs> because I did that, I got big headed. I didn't follow my trading plan. I decided to use a lot size of this amount on like day six. And, and, and I'm doing this amount of trading on this amount of money. And the market will slap you right upside the head because you weren't exercising the discipline that you're supposed to. So word to the wise, you don't know this stuff. You don't know how to give your money a job. When you're giving a system, follow the system of the educator. Once you follow the system of the educator, this is the result that you end up with. This is your end result. Once you're here after your three month period and you have your $50,000 balance, then make the withdrawal and put the money back into your debit account. Then at that point, do something nice for your spouse, do something nice for yourself, do something nice for your children. Your children's college fund is basically partially taken care of or always taken care of if they're going to a community college, if you're even sending them to college. Because now you guys know how money works. After a 90 day period and you've built an account of $50,000, is it safe to say you would do it again? You'll start four accounts with $50 a piece in them. Guys, get this financial literacy for yourself. Get this for your family. You owe it to yourself. Don't worry about what it cost initially. Focus on what you will have at the end. That's what it's all about. Guys, if this video was shared with you and you got value from it, please get back with the person who shared this video with you. Please ask them for more information on how you can take $195 of your lifestyle money and put it in a place where you can learn financial literacy and take $50 and give it a job and make it start working for you. So after a 90 day period, it will grow and it'll start to grow your fortune part-time. Continue to work full-time on your lifestyle while you work part-time on your fortune. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your family. You owe it to your family to sit at the dinner table and have the financial conversations. It should no longer be a taboo. You owe it to yourself. If you are watching my page live directly from me and you want more information about how you can get this financial literacy for yourself, by all means, go to www.learnmoreaboutforex.com. Again, that is www.learnmoreaboutforex.com. If you are on this page and somebody invited you through a share, please get back with them. Get back with them directly. Don't use my link because you're watching me. They took the time to share it on their page because they love you. They cared enough about you for you to get this information, for you to be a blessing to your family. So please get back with them. Make sure you get whatever link that they have for them, whatever, whatever they have to share with you to get this information. They're doing it out of love. Guys, we personally don't have to share this information at all. I made the investment in my financial literacy. I learned how to give my money a job. I learned how to make my money work for me part time work on work on the fortune part time i have this strategy working for me and my family my wife has her own strategy has her own brokerage account working for her my daughter has her own brokerage account working for her this is a family affair and it should be a family affair for you as well 
It should be a discussion that you guys should have and do it even on the days that the, the, the market doesn't go the way you want to and you have to replenish uh, day 18, day 28. You sit down and you talk about it because you are the master of the money. Ma the money is not the master of you. But as long as you continue to have to work for the money, it will continue to be your master. It will continue to dictate what kind of car you drive. It will continue to dictate where your children go to school. It will continue to dictate what type of place that you live in. It will continue to dictate what type of food that you have on what particular day. Get back with the person who shared this video with you guys. If you're watching it live from my page, if you're not already on my team, please go to www.forexmastercourse.com. This has been your brother. Your friend, I love you, Dion Dr. Pipper Sylvester. And some of you probably say, well, now I see why he called himself Dr. Pipper. Because every day we need pips. And when you get pips, that is what builds your fortune. Work on your, portion, your fortune part-time while you work on your lifestyle full-time on your job. Thank you, guys. This is Dion Sylvester signing off. Have an amazing day. See you guys later.